Okay, so we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus on this screencast, and I'm not going to actually prove the theorem. I'm just going to show you what it is and how you can use it. Now, remember that a definite integral, that's an integral that has a lower limit and an upper limit, is the area under a curve between those two limits. Okay, it turns out that if the function f this is little f, if function little f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and capital F is an antiderivative of little f on that interval, then the definite integral of f of x dx from a to b is equal to the antiderivative of f with b plugged in minus the antiderivative of f with a plugged in. So in other words, to get the area under this function f between a and b, I take the antiderivative, I plug in b, I plug in a, I subtract, and I have my area. Let's do a couple of examples. So here we're supposed to find the area bounded by y equals x cubed plus x, x equals 2, and y equals 0. So x equals 2 is this vertical line right here y equals 0 is the x-axis. And so what we're looking for basically is this area right here. Okay, and I didn't make my graph go far enough, but eventually the curve would intersect the vertical line up there, okay? All right, so to get that area, we're going to take the integral of x cubed plus x from 0, because that's the left boundary of our area, to 2, because that's the right boundary of our area. And that means we're going to take the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth over 4, and the antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. And I go ahead and write my limits out there to remind myself what I'm plugging in. Okay, now this is where students make a mistake. You've really got to watch your subtraction here, okay? So I'm going to subtract 2 to the 4th over 4 plus 2 squared over 2 minus the same antiderivative with 0 plugged in. I'm going to write it out even though you know it's just going to end up being 0, right? So I end up getting 16 fourths plus 4 halves, which is 4 plus 2, which is 6. So this yellow area is exactly 6 square units. All right, let's take, check out this one here. Now we're going to find the area bounded by x equals negative 2. So that's bounded by this vertical line x equals 3, that's this vertical line, and this function here, x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. Okay, so that's this area here, and this area here. Now remember, that area under the x-axis is negative, and area over the x-axis, or above the x-axis, is positive. So we're probably going to get a negative answer here. doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that there's more negative area than there is positive area. All right, you ready? The area is going to be the integral from negative 2 to 3 of x cubed minus x squared, minus 6x, dx. We're going to take the antiderivative. So that's x to the fourth over 4, minus x cubed over 3, minus 6x squared over 2, from negative 2 to 3. And by the way, you may be wondering, hey, what happened to the plus c's? Well, when we do this subtraction right here, 
if I have a plus C right there and then have a plus C there, I have a C minus C, so they disappear. So the nice thing about definite integrals is you never have to worry about forgetting to do a plus C because there isn't any C's. All right, back to this problem. So I'm going to plug in 3 into all these X's. Oh, and we can simplify this, can't we? Let's make that, instead of 6X squared over 2, let's make that a 3X squared. Okay, so now we're going to plug in 3, and we're going to plug in negative 2, and we're going to subtract. So this is going to be 3 to the 4th over 4 minus 3 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 3 squared minus negative 2 to the 4th over 4 minus negative 2 cubed over 3 minus 3 times negative 2 squared. Okay, so 3 to the 4th over 4 is 81 fourths. 3 cubed over 3 is 27 thirds, which is 9. And 3 times 3 squared is 27. And then negative 2 to the 4th is 16 over 4 is 4. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. We have a negative in front, so this is plus 8 thirds. And negative 2 squared is 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Okay, so now it's just math. 81 fourths minus 36. And then this is 4 minus 12 is negative 8 with a negative in front, so it's plus 8. And then I have a minus 8 thirds. You see what I mean by having to watch your signs? Got to be really careful with that. So now I get 81 fourths minus 28 minus 8 thirds. And believe it or not, that works out to negative 125 over 12. So just like we predicted, we got a negative answer because we have more area below the x-axis than we do above the x-axis. Okay, so that's using the fundamental theorem of, of calculus. You may be wondering, well, can our calculators help us with this? And they can. Let me bring this up. And your calculator will actually integrate for you. So if I wanted to do this integral right here, I would go to math, arrow down to number 9, function integration. And I'm using the new operating system for TI-84. So I'm going to put in my lower limit, arrow up, put in my upper limit. Put in my function, x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. And I need to tell it that I'm doing everything in terms of x. I hit enter. And if I want that in fraction form, I go math. And then number one is convert to fraction negative 125 over 12. If your calculator does not have the new operating system or it's a TI-83, then you would go to Math 9, which is function integration. You would put in the function, which in this case was x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. comma, you tell it what variable it's in terms of, in this case x, then you put in the lower limit, then you would put in the upper limit, and then you would hit enter. And it would give you the answer, negative 125 over 12. Okay, one more thing to talk about, and that's the average value of a function. Because just as derivatives are quotients, integrals are products. So they are accumulations of things. So if you want to know the total amount of something, you can integrate from A to B, and that'll give you the total amount of something. So to get the average value, let's say the average value of something accumulates over time, you would do the integral from time A to time B, and then divide it by the total time elapsed, B minus A. 
So the average value of a function is given by the integral of f of x dx from a to b over b minus a. So let's say we want to find the average value of the function 9 minus x squared over the interval negative 3 to 3. All right, we're going to go the integral from negative 3 to 3 of 9 minus x squared dx all over 3 minus negative 3. Okay, so the antiderivative of 9 is 9x. The antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. Our limits are negative 3 and 3. And 3 minus negative 3 is 6. So that will equal 1 sixth. And then I have 9 times 3 minus 27 over 3 minus 9 times negative 3 minus negative 27 over 3. So it's going to be plus. And we end up with 1 sixth of 18 minus negative 18, which is 1 sixth of 36, which is 6. So the average value of this function over that interval is 6.